a legion of boom. The name itself strikes fear into the heart of offenses. From 2011 to 2017, this unit redefined what defense meant. With future Hall of Famers like Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, and Cam Chancellor, the Seahawks were a powerhouse in the NFC, culminating in a Super Bowl 48 title. The following year, the Seahawks made it back to the Super Bowl, but came up one yard short. Following their defeat in Super Bowl 49, the unit began to fall apart. Defensive coordinator Dan Quinn left the team to become the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. I'm sure that worked out well for him. Toss to White. He's in! Patriots win the Super Bowl! In week 10 of the 2017 season, Chancellor suffered a neck injury that he would never return from. His career ended at just 29 years old. Sherman was released at the end of the 2017 season. He went on to play three seasons for the division rival 49ers before retiring after the 2021 season. Sherman was only 33 when he retired. Thomas remained with the team through the 2018 season, where he suffered a season-ending injury in Week 4. As he was being carted off the field, Thomas infamously gave his own sideline the finger, showing how soured the relationship between him and the organization had become. Thomas played the next season with the Baltimore Ravens and retired after the season at 30 years old. But what if it didn't happen that way? What if this unit stayed together? What if the injuries didn't end these Hall of Fame careers too early? And what if the Legion of Boom played together until they retired? This season on Madden NFL What If, we're going back to Madden 15, the game that featured the Legion of Boom on the cover. We'll see just how dominant this team would be without the injuries, and if they could bring more than just one Super Bowl title to Seattle. This is Madden NFL What If, Legion of Boom. Hello there sports gamers, welcome on back into the channel. I'm Brandon Satterwhite, and here we are with episode 5 of our Madden NFL What If Legion of Boom series. Last episode, we won another Super Bowl. It's our third in a five-year period, our second in the series with the Seahawks team. And now we're trying to do what we haven't been able to do with the Seahawks, win back-to-back -back Super Bowls for the first time, be the first team since those Brady Patriots back in the early 2000s to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Let's take a look at the team and see what we're going to be dealing with here in Episode 5. All right, looking at the team here, we still have Russell Wilson at the 99, Terrell Pryor still the backup, which again, we don't need because injuries are turned off, of course. Marshawn Lynch still rocking at a 95 overall, Brady Harden backing him up. Uh, I did see Darren McFadden in free agency, so I went ahead and threw him on the team on a minimum deal. Arkansas legend, favorite college football player growing up, love him, so might as well have him on the team, get him a Super Bowl ring. Uh, Dan Armstrong, the rookie that we drafted, comes in at 73 overall at fullback. Wide receiver room looks pretty much the same. Percy Harvin, Bram Anderson, Robin Dobbins. We did bring in Raynard Smith, who we drafted in the later round. 68 overall rookie out of USF. He's six foot six, so I don't know if he'll get many targets this year, but if he does, hopefully he does good. Uh, Luke Wilson is still the starting tight end, though we do have Laveris Mays, who we drafted in the first round. He's a 74 overall. Actually, I think I am going to go ahead and start him over Luke Wilson. Um, just because he is the rookie, he is the first round pick. I want to see how he does this year. So hopefully he does he does good there at tight end. Offensive line still looks the same, really hasn't regressed any, which I'm surprised to see, especially with like David Stewart. He's getting on up there in years and he's still an 88 overall, which I love to see. Michael Bennett, 87. We brought him back on a bit of a cheaper deal. We have Dominic Floyd, 80 overall, right end rookie that we drafted. Really excited to see how he does in his first year replacing Cliff Averill. Uh, Donovan Harmon, Devin Baker still here. The They were rookies last year, and they did really well as D-tackles. So happy to see how they continue to play. And then we also have Demetrius Barr, who we drafted as well. So another good rookie there on the defensive line. And then the rest of the defense looks pretty much the same. Malcolm Smith, Bobby Wagner, KJ Wright, Bruce Irvin at linebacker, Richard Sherman. We brought back Xavier Rhodes after he had a really good year. We also signed a young, I think, 26-year-old Justin Gilbert. He was sitting in free agency, signed him to a minimum deal. Earl Thomas sitting here at a 97, Cam Chancellor still a 99, and then Stephen Hauschka will be doing our kicking and punting for us this year. So that's how the team looks going into Season 5. Let's get simulating. All right, so we are in Week 14. We are 12-0 and 0 on the season. We're going to Lambeau for a Sunday night game against Green Bay. They're 10-2. 
We are having a heck of a season. Marshawn Lynch is leading the league in rushing. Bobby Wagner leads the league in interceptions. Jordy Nelson leads the league in receiving. I'm assuming he's still with the Packers, but this is a big time game. We need to win this. Let's go ahead and see if we can stay undefeated. So here we are at the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field trying to remain undefeated. We get a field goal on the first possession. Now we get another touchdown and another. So we're up 17 nothing at the end of the first quarter already. Now 24 nothing. We are blowing these guys out, but don't want to say anything yet. We could give up a lead, but it doesn't look like we're going to. Absolutely dominating the Packers here in Lambeau. And we're going to end up winning this one 37 to 10. Big time win for us as we move to 13 and 0. Only three more games left for a perfect regular season. Stats on the game for this one Russell Wilson 31 for 42, 344 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. Love to see that. Marshawn Lynch 21 carries, 90 yards, two touchdowns on the day. And the tight end, Laveris Mays. Showing out the rookie having a career day, 10 catches, 84 yards and a touchdown. Robin Dobbin, six catches, 67 yards. Bram Anderson, five catches for 78 yards. Marshawn Lynch, four catches for 58 yards and a touchdown out of the backfield. Earl Thomas led us with 12 tackles on the day. No sacks on Aaron Rodgers, but Earl Thomas also got two interceptions on the day. What a game for this guy here today. And then Hauschka was three for three on field goals with a long of 38. And here we are the very next week in week 15. We have a, a matchup at home against the 10-3 and three Arizona Cardinals. They are currently sitting at second in our division. We win this, we wrap up the division, and we keep the dream of the perfect season alive. All right, big game here in Seattle against our division rival, the Cardinals. We are get on the board first here with a touchdown. Now we're up 10-0. By the way, I did see the Cardinals now have Bridgewater playing as quarterback for them. 17 nothing now 17 7 as they get a score right before halftime and get a field goal right after halftime so that it goes from a three score lead to a one score lead but we get another touchdown it's 24 17 now 31 17 38 17 so some big late time score for us help us secure the win 14 and 0 two more games stats on this one 18 for 32 for russell wilson 326 yards two touchdowns did have an interception though marshawn lynch 17 carries 142 yards three touchdowns on the day wow Graham Anderson, five catches for 69 yards. Robin Dobbins, four catches for 65 yards. Marshawn Lynch, three catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown out of the backfield. Percy Harvin, two catches, 39 yards, and a touchdown. Richard Sherman led us with eight tackles on the day. We had one sack on Teddy Bridgewater, and Bobby Wagner got himself another interception. He had like eight midseason and was leading the league in interceptions, so... That's just another one. That lead's going to keep on growing. So now we're in week 16. We have a game against the Niners. I think at this point, we hop into the rest of our regular season games just to make sure we get the perfect season. I really want to go for that. But we have 99 offense and defense so far here. And we've got some guys that need some extensions, starting with Marshawn Lynch, who is currently working his way up uh, some of the big uh, rushing record lists at the moment. Um, but man, he wants a lot of money, but I'm willing to give it to him just cause, you know, he, he's one of the faces of this team. You know, he, he's a guy that's been here for so long. Now, Percy Harvin, on the other hand, this is a guy we may look to move on from. I mean, he's wanting six years, 75 mil. I'm willing to do like five years, 32 I know he's a 90 overall, but we have some good receivers behind him, I feel. Then Darion Tillman, I mean, he he's actually still pretty young, so I'd be willing to give him a good chunk of money to keep that offensive line good. We'll find out next week how those went, but now it's time to hop into a game against our division rival, the 49ers, and make sure they don't spoil our perfect season. All right, big game here against our division rival in Santa Clara. We're going to take the opening drive. We got a field goal out of it. And then we're going to get a touchdown. We're up 10 nothing now 17 nothing. They get a field goal, another one and there and there's a touchdown there. So they've really come back. We get a touchdown right before half. That's good for us. They're keeping us a close game. They're not going to let us win easily here. We're up 10 here late. Now it's up 3, up 10. That's going to be enough to do it. We're going to win against the 49ers. They come back. It wasn't as close late as it looks from the final score, but we end up winning it 41 to 35. 15 and 0. One game away from a perfect regular season.
Stats on the game for this one, Russell Wilson, 28 for 37, 264 yards, one touchdown, but he did have two interceptions, though, so a bit of a rough game for him. Marshawn Lynch, though, picked up the slack, 19 carries, 95 yards, three touchdowns on the day. Percy Harvin, six catches, 60 yards, and the one touchdown. Bram Anderson, six catches for 85 yards, and then the rookie, Lavaris Mays, five catches for 59 yards. Earl Thomas led us with nine tackles on the day. We didn't have any sacks on Colin Kaepernick. Uh, but we did have two interceptions, one from Bruce Irvin, one from Cam Chancellor, and no forced fumbles on the day. And then Hauschka was two for two on field goals with a long of 49. All right, so this is it, the final game to wrap up the regular season to try and go 16-0. We have the 5-10 and San Diego Chargers coming to Seattle, so this should be an easy game for us. Uh Percy Harvin did accept his contract, as did Darian Tillman, but Marshawn wants more. And I'm not sure how much more we'll be able to give him. We'll bump this up to, we'll bump it up to about 13 mil with 4 million as a signing bonus. This will probably take him through the rest of his career, I would figure. So hopefully he accepts that. And then the center wants a new contract as well. He's only 24. This is his first big payday. We're going to give him a deal. I want to keep that offensive line together because that's when we really started to have success when we built a really good offensive line for Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch. But let's hop into this game against the Chargers and see if we can secure the perfect regular season. All right, here we go. We have the Chargers at home. I did see that they have Sam Bradford as their starting quarterback now, so I guess Rivers moved on. But let's see what we do with this opening possession. We go down, we get ourselves a touchdown. Let's keep going. Let's blow them out here. Now they score. Ooh, do not like that at all. 14-7 now, 21-7 here right before half. They get themselves a touchdown. Now we score 28-14. Don't, don't like how much they're scoring on us here. But it looks like we are going to pull this off. We're going to go, and there it is. 28-17, we win it. And... The Seattle Seahawks have secured the first perfect regular season since the New England Patriots did it back in the day with Brady and Randy Moss and all of them. But now the question is, can we remain perfect throughout the playoffs and secure that 19-0 season that no one's been able to do as well as our second straight Super Bowl championship? Stats on the game, Russell Wilson, 25 for 33, 254 yards, one touchdown. Again, two interceptions. Don't like to see that from him. Rushing the ball today, Marshawn Lynch had 19 carries, 119 yards, and three touchdowns. Percy Harvin, 11 catches, 163 yards, and a touchdown. Bram Anderson, six catches for 52 yards. Robin Dobbins, two catches for 23 yards. Earl Thomas led us again with 10 tackles on the day. We had one sack from Michael Bennett, three interceptions, one for Cam Chancellor, one for Earl Thomas, and one for Bobby Wagner. That's big time for us. Love to see us getting those turnovers. All right, so we have the bye week here during the wildcard round, but Marshawn Lynch and Jokel both accepted their contracts, so they're going to stay here for this foreseeable future. All right, here we go. Divisional round, and again, we're facing our divisional opponent, the Cardinals, we beat them earlier this year. Can we beat them for the third time this season? It's hard to beat a team three times in a season, they say. So let's see. We've got the game at home. All right, divisional playoff game at home. We're going to get the opening kickoff and score a touchdown. We're up 7 nothing now. 14 nothing, 17 nothing, 24 nothing. A huge lead for us here. They do score 10 points, now 17 points in a row. But we're going to get another touchdown there before halftime. It's 31-17. to Now 38-17. We're back up by 21. Oh, man, this has been a back-and-forth game. But it looks like we're going to pull away here at the end. 44-17. to Now 44-20. We're going to win it. We're moving back to the NFC Championship game for the fourth year in a row. Let's freaking go. Russell Wilson in this one. 30-42. for 42, 262 yards. Four touchdowns with one interception. Awesome game from him there. Marshawn Lynch, 18 carries, 160 yards, and a touchdown. Bram Anderson, nine catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. Percy Harvin, six catches, 58 yards and a touchdown. Laveris Mays, five catches, 32 yards and a touchdown. And Marshawn Lynch, two catches, 22 yards, and a touchdown out of the backfield. Cam Chancellor and Bobby Wagner led us with seven tackles. One sack from second-year player Devin Barker. And two interceptions, one for Bobby Wagner, one for Richard Sherman on the day. Also, I forgot to look at the season stats for this year. Russell Wilson had over 4,000 yards passing, 30 touchdowns, only 11 picks, so he had a really good year. Marshawn Lynch, over 300 carries again, 1,900 rushing yards, 29 rushing touchdowns. That's a new record. That, that's, I'm pretty sure that's the NFL record. 
Brady Harden, 150 carries, 647 yards, 10 touchdowns. Russell Wilson, no rushing touchdowns on the year. Darren McFadden had 12 carries for 46 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Percy Harvin was our leading receiver, 91 catches, 1,100 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Brian Anderson, 85 catches, 1,000 yards, but only two touchdowns. That's a bit odd. Robin Dobbins, 71 catches, 735 yards, seven touchdowns. Laveris May, 65 catches, 506 yards, two touchdowns on the year. Bobby Wagner led us with 118 tackles on the year. He also had 10 interceptions. Earl Thomas had six. Cam Chancellor had six. Xavier Rhodes had two. Richard Sherman, only one interception on the year. That's a bit odd to see. Uh, did we have any forced fumbles? We had two for Justin Gilbert, one for Cam Chancellor, and one for Donovan Harmon. Did we have any defensive touchdowns? We had one from Bruce Irvin. And then Hauschka on the year was perfect from extra points. 30 for 34 on field goals with a long of 49. Andre Hagen of the Cowboys led the league in passing 5,300 yards. That might be a new NFL record. I forget what the record is at this time. He also led the league with 44 passing touchdowns on the year. So a great year for him. He's probably going to be the MVP. Rushing on the year, Marshawn Lynch led the league in rushing yet again and also led the league by a wide margin for rushing touchdowns. Jordy Nelson led the league in catches. Des Bryant led the league in receiving yards. And then Calvin Johnson with 17 receiving touchdowns. Bobby Wagner led the league with the 10 interceptions. And then who led the league in sacks? Vaughn Miller with 11. The, the sack numbers in this game were a lot lower than they are nowadays. But yeah, Andre Hagan does end up winning MVP over Marshawn Lynch. I really would have loved to see him with the 16-0 season, also get an MVP. But we do win Coach of the Year again with Pete Carroll. Marshawn Lynch wins NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Sean Lee gets Defensive Player of the Year. Ovi Bobby Wagner, that's a bit odd. Uh, Salma Hendricks of the Saints wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Laveris Mays, our tight end, finishes fourth. Devontae Roberts wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Hagan wins Best Quarterback. Lynch gets Best Running Back. Calvin Johnson got Best Wide Receiver. Best O-lineman goes to Darion Tillman. Best D-lineman goes to Carlos Dunlap. Best DB goes to Earl Thomas. And best kicker goes to Steven Hauschka. So we had a lot of guys get awards this year, but we still haven't gotten an MVP yet. I I'd like to see us get an MVP for once. But enough talk about individual rewards because we are focused on the perfect season. We are in the NFC Championship again. We have the Packers who we played earlier in the season, but now they're coming here to Seattle, and we're going to have to beat them again and try to move on to another Super Bowl. All right, here we go. NFC Championship game at home against Green Bay. We get our first drive, and we score a touchdown immediately. They answer with one of their own. This is going to be a hard-fought game. We get ourselves a touchdown, actually just a field goal. They get a touchdown before halftime. And now they're going to get another one. It's 21-10. Now we score a touchdown. It's 18. Now we're up 25-21. Another touchdown, 32-21. That should be enough. That's going to do it. 35-21. We're done. We won. We're going back to the Super Bowl. We're one game away from a perfect season. Stats on this one. Russell Wilson throwing a lot here in the playoffs. 34 for 45, 310 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And then Marshawn Lynch, 18 carries, 99 yards, two touchdowns. Brady Harden, seven carries, 23 yards, and a touchdown. Graham Anderson, a great game. Nine catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Robin Dobbins as well, nine catches, 95 yards. Percy Harvin, six catches for 70 yards on the day. Cam Chancellor and Richard Sherman each had seven tackles to lead us. No sacks on the day, but two interceptions for Richard Sherman against Aaron Rodgers. That's awesome to see. And now we're one game away from making history. Here we are at the Super Bowl out in Arizona. Win this. We complete the first perfect season since the Miami Dolphins in 1972. We have the Cincinnati Bengals on the other side. They went 12-4 and this year. They're a really good team. This isn't going to be an easy one, but let's do this thing. Here we go. Super Bowl 53 in Arizona, and we score first with a touchdown. They answer right back with one of their own. We get ourselves a field goal. We're up 10-7. to Now it's going to be 17-7. Will we get another one before half? We do. 24-7, big lead here in the Super Bowl, 27-7. Is it going to be enough? I think it is. 34-7. 41-7, 48-7, 51, we drop a 50-burger in the Super Bowl, and we have a chance now. We're going to hop in and knee this one down, the final knee down, to secure a perfect season. Russell Wilson with the knee. He will get his fourth Super Bowl of his career. 
the fourth in a six-year period, second straight, and the Seattle Seahawks secure their place in NFL history. They are 19-0, a perfect season. Something that only the 72 Dolphins have done before. 19-0, something nobody has ever done before. The dynasty continues. The legend grows. The glory remains. And Cam Chancellor this time winning Super Bowl MVP. There we are once again for the second year in a row. Raising another Lombardi Trophy. And very well could say this is the greatest dynasty in NFL history at this point. Because remember, the Patriots don't win all those other Super Bowls in this universe. So you could make it four in six years. I don't think even the Patriots did that. So there's an argument to be made there. Stats on the game, Russell Wilson, 37 for 46, 304 yards, four touchdowns and no picks. Surprised to see he doesn't get Super Bowl MVP with those stats. Marshawn Lynch, 21 carries, 95 yards, two touchdowns on the day. Percy Harvin, 17 catches, 180 yards, three touchdowns. He could have gotten MVP very easily. Laveris Mays, five catches, 28 yards and a touchdown. Bruce Irvin led us with eight tackles. No sacks on the day, but three interceptions by Cam Chancellor and two from Xavier Rhodes. Were any of them returned for touchdowns? They weren't, but three interceptions for Cam Chancellor. Okay, I see why he won Super Bowl MVP, but wow, the Bengals quarterback threw five picks in this game. Wow. And we drop 50 on them here. So with all the success we've had, I want to check out the legacy leaderboard and see where we're at now. We're now up here second behind only Vince Lombardi. But we have more Super Bowls than he has, more than Joe Gibbs, more than Tom Landry, more than Bill Walsh, more than John Madden. So we're right up there with the best head coaches of all time. And now let's see, we are behind only Joe Montana, Vince Lombardi, Peyton Manning, Jerry Rice, and Tom Brady in terms of legacy score. In terms of quarterback, you've got Brady, Manning, Montana. Let's see, is Wilson getting up here? Because, I mean, with four Super Bowls... Huh, that's weird. It only counts him as having two Super Bowls. I guess this isn't counting correctly because he's won the Super Bowl with us every year. I don't know why it's only counting him as having two. That's odd. Marshawn Lynch now as the third best running back behind only Adrian Peterson and Barry Sanders. Richard Sherman's getting up here. He's behind Rivas, Bailey, Night Train Lane, and Deion Sanders. Uh, Earl Thomas is getting up here in terms of legacy. Cam Chancellor's getting up here in legacy. For some reason, all the players, it only counts as having two Super Bowls, even though my coach, Pete Carroll, has four. That, that's a bit odd. I don't know what's going on with that. Some sort of glitch or something. Surely they would be all higher if they all had four Super Bowls. I also want to check out the NFL records at this point. Peyton Manning has the most passing yards in a career. Russell Wilson's nowhere on this. He also has the most passing touchdowns in a career. Rushing yards. Adrian Peterson has passed Emmett Smith to now have the all-time leading rushing record. And Marshawn Lynch has passed Barry Sanders. He's fourth another season, and he would pass Walter. And maybe if Peterson retires, Lynch would have a shot at catching him. Most rushing touchdowns, Marshawn Lynch is only four behind Emmett. So he another season and Marshawn would have the career rushing touchdowns record. And receiving yards, I don't think any of our guys would be uh, up there or any of the receiving ones. No for sacks. No one's up here for interceptions either. I think this last season, Marshawn... He had 1950, so that was up there as one of the best. Didn't quite hit that 2,000 mark yet, but he did break LaDainian Tomlinson's record with 29 rushing touchdowns. And then Hagen this year also was just a little bit behind Manning and Breeze's best years in terms of uh, passing yards, and then no one's really come close on the passing touchdowns mark yet. Jordy Nelson came up just 10 short of tying Marvin Harrison's best for 
uh, passing or catches in a season. But that's going to do it for this episode, y'all. And honestly, that might just be where we leave it. I mean, how do you top a perfect season? I think we completed what we wanted to do, see what would happen if the Legion of Boom were able to stay together. And if there wasn't that friction within the locker room after losing that Super Bowl to the Patriots, what would it have looked like? What was the true potential of this team? So I think we've completed that and now maybe move on to some other games and maybe start seeing what we want to do for season two of this. But let me know in the comments if there's overwhelming support, I'll keep it going. But if not, I'll probably move on to some other games and start seeing what I want to do for season two of Madden NFL What If. So if you have ideas for that as well that you want to pitch, you know, throw those in the comments as well and I'll figure out what I want to do for that. But for now, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see y'all next time.